Good afternoon, boys and girls. This is Mr. S. With your Chapter 16 review on Psychological Disorders. So let's get to it. Who else better than somebody who suffers from a bit of disorders of his own to talk about this? The first thing is right out the gate. Just like I talked about the changing from the DSM-4 to the DSM-5. My test bank versus my first textbook versus the textbook you are using. My slides versus what's on the test. I talk about mental health workers labeling a disorder when they see it to be deviant, distressful, and dysfunctional. That's what the book uses. The previous edition used the same idea, but the terms were atypical, disturbing, maladaptive, and unjustifiable. Please keep that in mind because the same four factors, which are the same as deviant, distressful, and dysfunctional, will appear on the free response. This is 40 questions, multiple choice, and free response because this is a good chapter. So let's get to the rest of it. Know the medical model. Know the biopsychosocial model. Know the idea of the DSM-4, what it does, what it doesn't do. It is used for classifying. It does not explain causes for disorders. It just helps classify them. Once we have classified disorders and we use the DSM-4, then we can find what the patient has. They then get a label, meaning they have this disorder. Please look at the idea of what labeling serves, its purpose. Um, for example, we no longer use the term neurotic. We use the term psychotic disorder. Look at some of the criticisms of the DSM-4 and some of the positive things. And the same idea with labeling, our idea of perceptions, bias, and so forth. The first type of disorder we looked at was general anxiety disorder. Please look at that. Know the idea of panic disorders, phobias, OCD. Please look at the biological perspective on general anxiety disorders. Please look at the role of pharmacology and antidepressants, especially in the use of obsessive compulsive disorder. From there, we went to the dissociative disorders, or DID, formerly known as multiple personality disorders. Um, look at the idea of dissociative fugue, the idea of dissociation, what that means. And one of the key factors is normally some kind of traumatic event causes a dissociation from the individual. As Freud might say, a regression or repression or both. And quite often we will see both in males and females, but more specifically in females, uh, it has been due to some either physical, sexual, or emotional abuse that occurred in their childhood. From there, we looked at the depression or depressive disorders or depression. Please also look at the idea of suicide. Please look at the idea of with depression and suicide. One of the key factors in suicide is what is known as suicidal talk. And I will talk about or look, remember how I have talked about that in class, especially the role of suicidal talk. Look at the idea of bipolar disorder in this grouping, the role of the biological perspective and linkage analysis. Please look at the role of pharmacology again and norepinephrine and neurotransmitters, especially in the role of bipolar uh, and depression. Look at the cycle of depression and how people see themselves in this world. From there, we looked at the role of schizophrenia. Please look at schizophrenia. There are quite a few questions on it. Know the different types. Um, know the difference from acute versus chronic. Know the role of hallucinations in the world of schizophrenics. Please look at what research suggests and some of the ideas, again, of genetic predisposition. Then we'll look at the idea of antisocial 
or personality disorders. So look at the narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder. Please look at groupings from a gender perspective um, and how we tend to see men quite often be much more of the antisocial personality. And then finally, as I said, that should lead us to free response. When you look at free response, Look at the idea that I'm going to tell you again. Atypical, disturbing, maladaptive, and unjustifiable. Take those four ideas and transmit them, recompose them in your head to deviant, distressful, and dysfunctional. Or a combination of the seven. You can label them in your head any way you want. It's your head. And how we can look at some behavior today that some might mark as deviant, distressful, or dysfunctional, but they don't have a disorder. You can look at the example I gave, and if you actually look at something that just happened in the news, there's actually been a few things, and especially one current event topic that many of you are very passionate about. If you look at the individual involved with that, his behavior could have been looked at as deviant, dis distressful, or dysfunctional, but definitely doesn't have a disorder. There could be some physiological, biological, momentary lapse situations, but that does not mean it's something permanent. And then look at the role of labels and what that may have already been done in the media, especially in the world of public opinion. So you should have fun with this test. It's a fun chapter. Please read it. If you have any questions, ask me in class, and we'll go from there.